great football game. Uh, you know, this uh, was a matchup that we had uh, wanted uh, at Notre Dame, and I know LSU felt the same way. Uh, we wanted to be challenged. Uh, we were disappointed in the way we played, obviously, at the end of the year, and, and our guys wanted this opportunity to uh, to finish the season the right way. And uh, they played hard. Uh, they played for four quarters, and, and really the mantra for us was, get this to the fourth quarter and, and um, find a way to win it. And uh, they certainly did that. Um, we controlled the ball for the last five and a half minutes and um, <coughs> Kyle Brinson came up with uh, the, the game winning kick. So really happy for Kyle and, and uh, uh, that's the way he came in to Notre Dame. Um, we recruited him out of high school uh, off the heels of uh, watching him kick game winners in high school state championships. So uh, it's a great way for him to finish up his career. So great football game. With that, we'll open it up to questions. Coach, Coach you, know, you said all along that you would need both quarterbacks to win this game. And in that final series, I want to say that both of them had four plays each of they did. positive yardage, something like that. Uh, what determined which guy went in on, under which circumstance? And what was the thinking that specifically on that final series? Well, th there were plays that, uh, just being familiar with both of them, that I felt that they could execute and and you know help us move the ball down the field. So uh, went back to uh, you know just a, a feeling of uh, you know what I believe that they could execute uh, in 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 a very crucial situation of the game, uh, and that's kind of how I called the game down that. Um, in that last series, and so really try to fit it to what I believe that those were the that they felt comfortable with. Would would uh, Everett have gone in had Malik's helmet not come off? Uh, he, he would have went back in the game, um, but, certainly. Would, would, yeah, I mean, at that point, or you know, you and then you stayed with Everett right then, right? Yeah, than going right back to Malik. We were going to go back to a couple of plays that he was scheduled to get. I don't remember, Al, if it would have been immediately, um, but I think it would have been the next play. Yes, I do believe it would have been. Coach, is this the least job to lose going into the spring, or were you keeping an open competition? Yeah, this really was just about this game. Uh, playing both of them, um, and my focus uh, was about winning this game, and we'll figure out the quarterback situation <coughs> in January. Um, so uh, th this was just u utilizing both of their skills to, to get a win today. Right, you had 30 days to prepare two quarterbacks in a game plan. Can you, could, can you envision yourself doing that with two quarterbacks, adjusting the different defenses on a weekly basis? Because it encompasses so much if you were to do that. Well, part of, part of playing the league and starting them was to try to find out how we were going to utilize them in the game and, and how to construct playing two quarterbacks. So part of the making the decision to start him was to find out how we were going to move forward um, and effectively craft and put together a game plan for both of them. And today I think we kind of saw uh, a glimpse of what that's going to look like. I couldn't have done it without starting him and playing him and getting a feel for the game. I think we can move forward and begin looking at that uh, and how we can construct that. I asked you something similar this on Friday, but I mean, tonight you can feel like you just had a lot more at your fingertips, a lot more buttons that you could press at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brian, can you talk about your offensive line and their play, their contribution, and using the second tight end? Well, obviously, you know, two tight ends in the game, um, uh, a will up front that uh, started with Ronnie Stanley. Uh, Ronnie today was. Uh, uh, extremely vocal uh, and kind of lit a fire on uh, under everybody today and I think it carried over um, I don't know do you guys feel that I mean I, I thought he was extremely vocal and more than, uh, he's, ever been. More than he's ever been and it just kind of charged up everybody and Ron, Ronnie's not a big talker and uh, it just seemed to elevate everybody's play on the offensive line but uh, you know they, they were certainly a big part of our success today. Coach, you always you want to start a game and end a game as strong as you can. The opening drive of the game, the last drive of the game, 29 plays, 137 yards, 13-37 off the clock. How would you rate those two drives among the best drives you've had this season? 
they were the best drives that we had this season in terms of uh, exerting our will on our opposition against a very good football team in LSU, uh, controlling the clock. Uh, we dictated the, the, the outcome by controlling the football. Uh, obviously, if LSU has the football with number seven, he's a game changer. And, we, we certainly couldn't give him the football back. We, we were in the huddle and we looked at each other and Malik was there. It was five minutes, I think, and 42 seconds left in the game. And we said, guys, this is it right here. We can't give him the football back. If we do, we're probably not going to win the football game. So we have to control the tempo. Coach, so Ryan, how, have, how well do you feel both quarterbacks played? I thought they played very well. And, and I think they played well because they played together and they played unselfish. They trusted uh, what we called, the, the, big, the big word for us was trust. Um, let us call the game, trust what we're calling, trust what we're doing, um, and, and we're gonna get you there. And, and I, I thought that that was pretty evident from Everett and Malik. Uh, just, just giving us that opportunity to trust what we're doing. If you do that and stay within uh, what we're calling in the system, we'll have success. I thought they both did a great job. And in particular, I thought Everett was outstanding, um, even in the last drive where, you know, nobody really knows this, but he got hit pretty hard on, on the play that he made. He had to go in and, and get a shot. It's the first time he's ever done that since he's been here at Notre Dame to come back out and play. I was really proud of him. That was the completion of Fuller? That's correct. And that was a shot in his right shoulder? No, it was in his ribs. He, he, um, he got hit pretty hard. Coach, the defense really only gave up one touchdown drive right. to LSU, three big plays. Did right. you get a sense coming in, as bad as the defense has looked at times towards the end of the year, that you could get that kind of an effort and that kind of a performance from the defense today? We knew we were going to play better. We got this guy back over here. When you get 91 back on your football team, that, that helps a lot. Um, you know, getting him back um, healthy, uh, you know, moving uh, Isaac Rochelle down inside gave us a little bit more inside presence. Um, I think that helped. Cody Briggs on the outside helps us out a lot. And, and you know, we, we were beat up and tired, um, you know, late in the season. So getting a break there a little bit really rejuvenized rejuvenized our football team, particularly our defense. And quite frankly, you know, we kept our defense off the field and we did a better job. I did a better job coaching. Um, and, and, and I think that helped uh, in, in, in this respect that we didn't have to put our defense in some tough positions. Brian, the other day you were, you were talking about your youth and I think you said there'll be nowhere to hide in this game that you'll learn a lot about your team. What did you learn about this team tonight? That, uh, you know, they're, first of all, that, you know, offensively, we can take care of the football. Uh, if we really uh, practice the right way, uh, if, if we are uh, committed to that, um, we had no turnovers today against an aggressive LSU defense, uh, so there's no reason why we can't uh, play uh, mistake-free football. Um, we also learned that we can play physical and tough, uh, even if we're a little bit uh, banged up and, and uh, don't have the guys. We, we don't need to have one guy um, and, and uh, have him on the field. We can rally around other players. Uh, so smart, tough football, uh, we can play that at any time. I think we saw that today. Coach, one, it was today about a life lesson for these boys as far as adversity and toughness and stick to it and all that and everything? I don't know. Ask them. Uh, what about a kid? Life lesson? Yeah, I would say so. yes. <laughs> I mean, that, that's all we talked about. We, we really talked about this more being a, a life lesson for, uh, you know, handling adversity. We had some adversity. We had, you know, everybody was, uh, you know, down on Notre Dame and, and uh, our kids and uh, we can't do this and we can't do that. I said, that's going to happen in life. And you, you just got to believe in yourself, believe in what you're doing, stick with it. Um, and, and trust what you're doing. And if you do that, um, you're going to be okay. And, and uh, we trust in our, our players, and, and they continue to work hard for us, and it was going to work out for them, and it's a life lesson for them that they've learned. That rotation that you had in the final drive with the quarterbacks, would you have had that more to ever not taken that big hit? More no, no. I mean, as you saw, we had kind of settled into – 
this guy was the runner and Everett was kind of the thrower, if you will, a little bit. Um, so it kind of had started to, to kind of factor into, even though he threw the football effectively and Everett ran a little bit, we were controlling the clock with some Q runs with, with Malik and some reads and, and Everett was throwing the football. So it would have still come out the same way. Right, but you, you have a number much. on time of possession. It ended up being 37 minutes to 23 minutes, which is what LSU does to everybody. Did you have a number Nine in Nine minutes a quarter. Pardon me? We, our number that we told our guys is that we wrote on the board, we wanted nine minutes per quarter. We needed 36 minutes to beat that. We, we got it. We hit the number we wanted. Coach, you talked down the stretch about during the streak that you know you were a play here, play there, away from from winning games. Today you went 12 and 19 between third and fourth down. You made big stops when you need to. Can you talk about just your players' ability today to, to make those plays when they needed to? Players make plays. And we told them, I said, listen, we're, we're going to get you to the fourth quarter. Trust the plan. I'll, I'll get you to the fourth quarter. I promise you that. We'll get you there. And then you got to go make some plays. And these guys made plays. Sheldon made some, some big plays for us. Kyle made plays, Malik made plays. Players will make plays. A Notre Dame football player comes here to make a play, and we'll get you there to the fourth quarter. Then you gotta go make a play. This year, we got to the fourth quarter, and we didn't make some plays, and, and we lost some football games. We lost to Florida State in the fourth quarter. We lost to Northwestern in the fourth quarter. Uh, we lost to, to Arizona State in the fourth quarter, uh, and we lost to Louisville in the fourth quarter. Um, and, and we got the game in hand in the fourth quarter today, and we handled it in the fourth quarter. We're going to make that a habit uh, with this football team. We didn't do that this year. Today we did it, and we're going to make that uh, what we build off. Right, Kyle, Kyle, what's, going, game. what's going through your head, Kyle, when you're lining up for that last half? They have iced you a couple times. Um, the icing doesn't really bother me. Uh, you know, as Coach Kelly already said, and as you guys asked, it's a life's lesson. We all learned, and you know, I've went through a lot of adversity. Uh, you know, great career, and then kind of almost ended like that. And kind of, uh, it hurt me a lot these past couple weeks. Um, so going into this game, it was just, you know, me and Malik just, you know, clicking on all cylinders, trying to figure everything out. And you know, when I'm out there, it was my mind's always clear, as clear as day. And uh, you know, I finally shook off all the cobwebs and was able to trust this guy next to me. And you know, that's how we got the game done. So. How did that feel? Felt great, felt great. But you know, not only just for me, but to leave a program so historic like this in this kind of fashion is very, it's a blessing for me, but also to be able to help win a game for you know all my teammates is a bigger blessing. Malik, how about you? What was it like just to be out there for such an important chunk of time today? And how do you feel like you played? Um, I think what was important today is that we got the hold down. Uh, I know in, in previous games, I can take accountability for uh, most of that. I'm glad that uh, when it came down to it, we got that shot to prove that uh, we can get off the field goal successfully. Um, in terms of our play today, uh, I was just trying to do my job. Uh, I know what the game plan was and, and, and what the plan of attack was in order to win the football game. And um, I just tried to protect the football. That was probably the number one thing going in that I tried to focus on. And then just do my job and uh, not try to put it all on myself because I know uh, the other ten guys around me, especially the offensive line, is going to get their job done. And uh, we had a great game. Well, you said after you were, the you were really emotional after the game. What was that going through your head, Malik? And what was that feeling like? After? Well, uh, going from uh, just the whole the whole season, just being a little bit frustrated in terms of like finding my place on this football team and uh, being able to still stay focused and still stay tuned in when, you know, when things around me wasn't going the way that uh, I felt like I could contribute to the team. And, uh, you know, life is about these opportunities that we get each and every day and taking advantage of them. And I'm, I'm thankful it's a blessing I got that opportunity and uh, I didn't want to ruin it for this football team. And coming off of the losses we had, I think it was important that we took advantage and did whatever it took to win. And then when we focused on winning, this team came together and we uh, got the job done. Well, you said after the USC game that you were, your role was almost like a distributor to get the ball to your playmakers. Did you feel that your role is a little more of a playmaker today with the offense? No, my, my role never changes in terms of being a distributor. Um, you know, when they call my number, I just run a play, uh, try to get it in the best possible position. And then when, you know, my job is to make plays for other guys, it's just my job to distribute. So uh, just being a facilitator and having command over the offense is something that uh, is important to me. And it's important that uh, you know we protect the football and keep continuing to move forward.
Coach, you had a lot of success in this game running these sweeps with with CJ and and, uh, and Tory. You had a lot of success throwing the ball in the front with the screens um, against the, probably the fastest defense you played this season, or one of. Was his ability to run the ball and, and do the reads and keep the ball between the tackles really the difference in this game, or, or was it a combination of how well you guys also played up front? Uh, no, I, I think it's a, you know, we used a lot of different formations, our two tight ends, kept them off balance. Um, you know, I think the ability to, uh, uh, one of the things that we did very well is we blocked on the edge very well. Ben Koyak was outstanding today, blocking on the edge of our perimeter. Um, you know, they actually brought pressure when we, when we brought our uh, formation down where CJ had the 50 yard run. Uh, you'll see that Ben Koyak had an outstanding block uh, on the edge, which was able to get him outside. So I, I just think we had some really good uh, blocking at the point of attack, and we were able to use a multitude of formations using both 12 personnel and 11 personnel, two tight ends and one tight end. And, and, and I think we kept LSU uh, off balance a little bit, maybe uh, from what they had seen and scouted us from, from uh, past games, we hadn't shown a lot of those formational looks. What about Shell Malik as a blocker? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, uh, I, I would, I would characterize it a little bit different. I, I'd call him a screener, <laughs> not a blocker. Sheldon, word on social media before the game was that you were going to come back next year. Is that accurate? Uh, I guess we'll uh, find out in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, what did you think of uh, Mike McGlitchie's performance stepping in for Christian Lombard today? Uh, you know, it's, it's hard for me to evaluate uh, individuals, uh, but I can tell you that any time that you rush for 200 and, uh, 263 yards against a very good SEC defense, um, you, you're generally going to say that's a pretty good job. Uh, and, you know, obviously our quarterback was protected very well against on um, third down situations when they had their speed package in. Uh, we did not have any uh, guys coming off the edge. Uh, our issues were when we sprinted out, um, we had some issues. But I would have to tell you that um, based upon not having watched the film, uh, probably had a pretty good day. Ryan, how important is this from a recruiting perspective, particularly in this part of the country, to say, hey, we came into the South, played one of the SEC's traditional powers and beat them? Well, it certainly uh, allows us to continue to recruit down in this area without having to apologize for who we are and, and that we can come down uh, and, look, we're not going to come into uh, LSU's territory and, and, and steal the top kids in, in Louisiana. But we're going to get some of the kids down here because Les can't get them all. And, and uh, Notre Dame will be attractive to some of the kids down in this area. You know, to, to beat an SEC school like LSU allows us to continue to build that national credibility that you need uh, in recruiting today. Well, it, it was interesting because I had a number of guys in my ear to take a time out. Um, and I didn't want to take a time out because I didn't want to prompt them to go back to the sideline and think about calling a fake. So that's how I, smart I am. Um, so we were just yelling out, be prepared for the fake. Uh, it looked like up on the board that he wasn't in, and then of course it was confirmed that he wasn't in. But uh, our guys were, were kind of tuned in uh, for a potential fake at that time. Brian, you said this was about 2014, but how much does this help as a springboard for this team going into the offseason to get a win like that? Oh, it's certain. Anytime you get a victory in the manner that we got it, because it was an important component that we were not finishing off and that was these guys were look when you when you work so hard at something you need to start to see the benefits of that and they were working hard they were preparing hard but they weren't seeing the benefits of that and that was they weren't seeing the wins so uh, it, it, it allows us to continue to do our work and now they know that if they continue to work the same way they're going to see the benefits of of their work and that is uh, winning football games. So that benefits you going into 2015. Brian, regardless of what you do with can this style of offense, 51 carries today, be something that is your new identity next year, regardless of what you're playing? 
I, I mean, look, I mean, I think the most important thing for us today was to win this game. So we have to have a game plan for, for, for today. Um, we know what we have with both quarterbacks. He's not going to change. So we're going to continue to, to utilize um, his 223 pounds. Oh, is it 225 or 230? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to continue to use uh, his strength. He's a very good runner of the football. We love you know, the fact that both of these guys can, can make plays. Uh, so uh, I think it's fair to say that, that um, both of them together can give us some really good balance in both of those areas. Malik, how much fun was it just to be out there, you know, playing a lot? Because you haven't had too many opportunities so far. Oh, man. Um, well, I haven't really played a lot since my senior high school. So uh, just being out there gave me a, that feeling of, all right, I'm doing this again. And it's uh, kind of nervous. But uh, after a while, it's like, all right, well, they hit me pretty hard, so you got to stop being nervous. And, um, you just gotta, you just gotta remain focused on the fact that uh, this is about your team. This is about getting the team victory. So, uh, no pressure was placed on me specifically or individually because I knew that it was, you know, the pressure on the whole team to win. And it was a big game. I mean, you know, we're not playing like a community college, so uh, this was important for us to get this victory and moving forward and having a, a strong, uh, a strong effort moving in towards the spring of next year. Sheldon, when you found out that Malik was going to start, was it oh hell or hell yeah? <laughs> well, I have confidence in Malik, so it was like a hell yeah. <laughs> How'd you feel physically, Sheldon? Uh, as far as percentage or? Yeah, that too. Uh, it's probably about 90% today. How you feeling now? Uh, a little swollen, a little sore, but uh, I guess that's coming from uh, playing the SEC team. <laughs> Did you have some doubts along the way that you were whether you would be ready or not? Uh, not at all. You can't miss an opportunity like this. And Kyle, I know the field goal attempt was a little bit longer, but kicking it pretty much right into the line, right into Rochelle, does that freak you out down the road for you or just a completely different scenario? No, not at all. It doesn't freak me out at all. So. Is that the side of the field you wanted to be on? The, would it be the left hash mark? To be honest, I don't really need to pick a side because uh, at the end of the day, it's how you have self confidence in yourself. And so, you know, through these past couple of weeks, how hard they've been on me, you know, Coach Kelly kept coming up to me in my ear and saying, you know, we need you to be confident in yourself. You know, you have that confidence in yourself. And when you came here these past couple of years, don't let it go to, you know, to waste right now. So, you know, it's just for me to be confident and, you know, you put it on left hash, right hash, middle, either way. I knew it was going to go on. I would got time for two more questions. Malik, you're a really competitive guy, and and yet today it was about working with Everett. Did, knowing that you were both going to be a big part of the game plan, did it change the way you looked at him? Did it change how you interacted with him during a game? Uh, Fab did a great job today, and you know knowing that both of us was going to play, I mean, it was just about working together. Uh, my perspective on him still didn't change. I mean, we're still competitive. We're still getting after it. We're still it had that mindset that uh, you know it's you know we got to do this for the team and, and we're gonna push each other to be great. Um, you know, Coach Flores says all the time, "How great do you want to be?" And I think that with that competitiveness in the air, it's definitely gonna push us to towards that goal. Um, I'm glad we got a chance to do that, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out next year. And uh, looking forward. Malik, was this your Ruby moment? <laughs> Rudy was like a one-hit wonder, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs>